Hello my beauties and how are we doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and for those of you who don't know me my name is Cassandra and if you are on any type of self-development journey if you want to be better in any area of your life if your focus right now is to i don't know achieve something new do something different break a cycle you know like literally level up this is the channel for you so subscribe and if you're already subscribed welcome back and thank you so much for following me on my journey please 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 make sure throughout this video if you anything that you like feel like want to share pause it write it i love 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 reading the comments i love replying back and don't forget to like so more people can see it and also if you're on instagram and you don't follow me already or what are you doing please go and follow me and um yeah when you're watching a video take a little photo or take a little video on your um phone and literally at me so i can see because i love interacting with you guys on instagram too like i really wanted to come on today and just say like literally thank you i wanted to thank everyone who has literally reached out sent a message told me how much it's helped um i don't know when you're so scared of doing something and then you actually do it and people are genuinely being helped by it it's a different kind of feeling and one thing about me is i said about this channel being about self self-development and all the rest of it and okay right now we're talking about relationships my relationship that i was in things i went through and the things you can learn from that i remember my mom used to say this when i was young and i used to be like what does she even mean by this i'm a graduate i'm like i know i'm only i'm only young <laughs> but i feel like i'm a graduate in a lot of areas of life yeah i've got a lot of life skills let's put it this way yeah let's, let's put it that way i've got a lot of life skills and because i've got a lot of life skills i've managed to learn a lot of things and i think when my mum passed that allowed life to slow down i know time doesn't slow down but it allowed me to see things through a different lens and what i will say is one thing i always say is it allowed me to see life like my classroom it allowed me to understand whatever room I'm in, whatever room I'm blessed to be in, whatever people I'm blessed to be around is to learn something. I make sure I'm always taking notes, mental notes. So I've had the privilege of being in rooms with billionaires, millionaires, people with knowledge upon knowledge, people who are entrepreneurs, people who also like me are scholars at life like i've been in the rooms with all different types of people people who have maybe you know failed in 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 people's eyes in some areas of life but still have a lot to share people who are older people who are younger people who are married have been married for years people who have been divorced and like i said i've seen it as my classroom so i literally soak up information and sometimes i used to feel like i was bursting with things that i wanted to share but obviously timing 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 so this is what you're gonna see in videos as well as vlogs like i've said but you're gonna just hear me share the knowledge that i've been able to learn the notes that i've been able to take and i'm just gonna feed it back to you like why wouldn't i like this is us like you are my friends and i'm gonna share what i learned just like you call your friend hey this is what the, this is what i'm gonna do i'm going to offload download share to you guys we can learn grow develop together great okay but that was the intro so today's video is all about um being married being in a relationship with someone on the autism spectrum and in my case that was someone who had my ex had dyspraxia and he had aspergers yeah and the difficulties the challenges yeah, the good the bad the ugly and all the in between okay so i'm going to try to be as i don't want to say as quick as i can but what do you guys think of the length of the videos that's another thing so roughly my videos are usually like 20 minutes um i don't really like to do them for too long because i have adhd as you lot know so my attention span isn't the best don't get me wrong if it's something really interesting that i'm very interested in i'll watch the whole video and maybe some pauses maybe some going back about five times but we'll watch it so what do you guys think um comment below how long you think a video should be um but yeah so one thing i will say and i'm gonna say it i said it in like the last video kind of i am not a coach i'm not a psychologist psychotherapist i'm not an 
autism expert I'm none of those things but I have an experience in it in being in that sort of relationship and being in that relationship for 11 years so I feel like I could speak on it I will start with the positives and I will start with some of the things that I think maybe attracted me to and attracts people like me as in neurological so although I am ADHD I'm not on the spectrum so yeah so one of the things that I will say is with my ex um they are brilliant okay let's just put it that way they are brilliant a lot of people that you may know who are doing amazing things in this world in this life who excel above the rest usually have some sort of autism form of autism there's a lot of people that over the years of being with my ex i realized okay this is this is why because you're brilliant yeah yeah they got great minds and they, they it's something what they call hyper focus so when i say hyper focus it means that they will find a thing and they will just be fixated on that thing and sometimes in my case when they are beginning to find a love interest that will be you so they will fixate on just loving you and loving you in the way you want to be loved and doing what you want them to do and being how they want you to be and then they may switch off because now they've got another focus and that can be a hard thing but we're going to go into that in the second part of the video okay so they're brilliant i said that one they are very logical so they they lead with logic they are very like okay one plus one equals two two plus two equals four they're very logical they see things in a bit they can so if you're very an emotional person they can make you see the logical side of it they can make you even see why someone may do something in a certain way or be wrong or that like they will logicalize most things and although i hope logicalize is a word i don't know but although that might be a bit oh i feel like that can come on the plus like as in a good thing or a negative thing either one okay another thing about them they are very loyal okay extremely loyal they will be there with you they will be there for you they will they're loyal okay they're very very loyal that's another thing uh another great thing about them they're great friends i think they're amazing friends i think um one thing about them as well a lot of people on the spectrum they learn to mask so that's something like i said a lot of things do cross over but with the masking they are very good at um like masking behaviors so a lot of times a lot of people like everyone will be like they're my best friend because when they're with you they're going to mask you they're going to make you feel welcome they're going to make you feel loved they're going to make you feel all of these things they are brilliant at yeah okay so as friends they are absolutely amazing friends um what other thing very inspiring inspiring and just making you feel like you could do and be anything like you look at them and you're like wow if you could do it i could do it too they have great attention to detail they um don't hardly really forget things they remember like being one years old that they have some amazing memory yeah they mem remember a lot so when you're with them and you're like oh don't forget nine times out of ten they're gonna remember um in terms of the challenges that you face being with someone that is especially in a relationship sense on um, the spectrum i find it hard to talk about okay why i find it hard is because i find it unfair and that's the best way for me to put it i find it unfair that i find it unfair that sometimes it's hard for someone that's on a spectrum and someone that's neurotypical to blend I find it hard that, especially when they have not been diagnosed at a young age, so also maybe don't really understand all that they're going through, I find it hard to talk about because I know I went through it and how much I tried to understand my ex, but for the most part of it, I didn't. And for the most part of it, I think I wanted my needs met and I didn't understand the the like the complications of being with someone who is on the spectrum and when i say that i mean like i said they're very logical if or like me you are like I, if you saw the video before so if you haven't already go back i'll put something so it'll be up um about adhd and i'm adhd so i have a i'm very emotional and emotional people and logical people can really like it's some it's a match that happens often and i know people are watching that they're gonna be like oh my god this is me it's a match that happens often because you are an empath or they are an empath 
and you are logical or they are logical and it's like the two mesh together is needed because the logical person loves the way you are just not logical and you're all over the place and you're just loving and caring and all of that stuff and the emotional person loves the fact that this person is so logical so organized so like so it's a match that they you know you come together thinking that you're going to balance each other out okay i'm not saying that you can't balance each other out but this is where the challenges come yeah and one thing that i feel like i've learned over time is i feel like compatibility trumps compromise and when those two mesh together there is a lot of compromise and sometimes you don't always want to compromise sometimes you just want to gel okay and when you've got a lot of things in common like a lot of values all these stuff characteristics in common i think it's a bit easier to understand each other also attachment styles come into this yeah but i can go into attachment styles if you want to but these are like i say these are all things that i've learnt after being with my ex okay so you know i know a lot of you are going to be like oh you know this stuff now so why no it's stuff i've learned after and obviously like i've said we're on two different pages and two different places in our lives okay and we are happy with the decision we made guys all right i know that you guys are sad i understand and i was sad too and sometimes still sad about how it like as in to say the things i know now i'm like oh do you get what i mean but over years this is actions have reactions and over years the same actions have reactions do you get what i mean so if you get it you get it and if you don't i don't know yeah but um yeah i can go into attachment styles i had a very insecure attachment style because of the way i way i um was brought up and i feel like my ex had a very avoidant attachment style okay so i'm let's talk about it let's speak it through let's uh, he's let's avoid it let's act like it's not really there and yeah do you get what i mean i love you you love me what's all the rest of the stuff about all right so i find it hard to talk about sometimes because i know that it's such a sensitive subject especially for someone that's on the spectrum because they're told a lot that and especially even me being adhd this is why i even understand it more and again i'm being an empath and i'm being empathetic and i'm like oh gosh do you get what i mean and i think this is why i even try to make it work for so many years yeah because it's not about love okay i'll say this it's not love we know you love people going into relationships it's not about love if it, if it was just love i swear we would be with we'd be so happy but it's not just about love it's about loads of other things and one of the things like i said they're told a lot okay you're not good enough um you're not doing the right thing oh that's not how you do it oh that's not how you act or that and remember if you're not diagnosed imagine constantly hearing you're not good enough that's not what you do I think that's another reason why they become so brilliant because they want to become so brilliant in something because you're always told you're not good at that and being now understanding now even ADHD is the same it's like I really want to be good at something because I I feel so much when people tell me oh like oh you did it again Cass or you got that wrong again Cass or oh like Cass you're so it's it's almost like oh can I just get something right? So I think those are the things that really make me feel for anyone going through this kind of thing. And even why I want to talk about it, because if you're in it and if I can speak to you before you get to a place where your relationship becomes, I think it's depolarized, as in you lose like the, it becomes like a cycle where it's like you're upset with each other and the love is like, you feel bitter and it just causes this cycle where eventually either you work it out or you end up breaking up because the relationship becomes so bad and becomes so toxic because you know over the years you know in the beginning of a relationship i feel like you come in with a clean slate and you guys will know that as time goes by little things happen that you don't always speak about that cause bitterness that create things and that's why i'm a firm believer in don't go to sleep with anger like let it go if you can forgive try and forgive within that day and then you know but if you keep letting things harbor and build up 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 by the time you know it your relationship is gone down the drain <laughs> i feel like i'm talking a lot but yeah so those are the things in terms of emotion so imagine as an emotional being i'm going i'm i get confused that okay do you love me do you not love me do you love me do you not love me because I feel like for people that are on the spectrum, they're outside masking, oh, playing this role outside and having to like, you know, be this, be that, because they're told that they should be this way, that way, and they come home and they're tired. 
they are tired they just want to be in their corner watching their shows just like zoning out of life and if you're with them as their partner and you see them out there being these confident out there enjoying and then they come home and they're like quiet it's almost like what's wrong what did i do that's always the question what did i do what did i do and for me personally no matter how many times it was like it's not you or i just felt like it was or i felt like oh but why do you treat me like that when we're in the house and stuff like that and i won't say it was all the time because it wasn't it wasn't um i think sometimes because of the logicalness of them they can be insensitive by accident because they try to be really logical and give you a way out and help you and then but sometimes you just need a hug sometimes you just need affection and they maybe struggle with that especially if they haven't been diagnosed and then that's where you're like oh like now you feel alone um something that i can read to you that will kind of sum up what i'm trying to say so after i broke up with my ex i found out that um, what it is called when you are in a relationship with someone who is Asperger's is called the Cassandra um, syndrome, the Cassandra phenomenon. And it points towards the frustration of being with someone who is in, who is Asperger's. So if you're going, if you're give, so basically I'm just going to read it to you or read some to you. So even when I'm reading this, the terminology changes so much, I'm not sure if they still use Asperger's because they are getting rid of the term high functioning because with, um, I don't know if I said what autism is. Autism is just a disability within the brain, a breakdown, a dysfunction in the brain. So it's a disability. It's just not seen physically. And this is where the, why they struggle, because it's not seen physically. And because it's not seen physically, we almost just be like, I saw a comment before that's like, oh, but you can't tell that your ex is on the spectrum. It's not something you can see. It's not something you can tell. Like I said, they're very good at masking. And that's why they've taken away the term high functioning, because just because they are maybe better at functioning in society doesn't mean what's going on in their brain it means that they are more they're probably struggling more on the inside so it will be feeling like your partner ignores you um ignores your emotions uh um it says the psychological term of like what you go through is reduced self-esteem confusion anger depression anxiety disassociation or loss of self and social phobias um it can also cause physical symptoms. So being with someone that's on the spectrum, and especially when they don't understand, it can cause physical symptoms like headaches, fatigue, insomnia, weight changes, reduced um, immunity. I just wanna read this as well. So it says that even though autistic people may be highly articulate and intelligent, many still experience social and emotional differences common in autism, okay? So although the person may be seem high functioning and be able to artic articulate themselves, be intelligent. They may lack emotional re recipro this word reciprocity, <laughs> unable to show their empathy or compassion at times, maybe not be skilled at seeing another person's point of view. So that's another thing. I think it got to a point, especially with my ex, where I was always trying to prove him wrong because I was tired of feeling like he always wanted to be right okay and at the beginning of our relationship because i was quite insecure quite um i love the fact of how intelligent he was and i didn't feel like that about myself i feel like i really praised him a lot and also took anything he said i saw it as it was the truth and it was like it must be real because he said that he's very intelligent he's very smart and as the relationship went on that's something that became frustrating to me because i felt like oh like i also know some things um i also like feel like i have things to say or do you get what i mean and so i was always trying to prove him wrong and it's very hard to try to prove someone on the spectrum wrong <laughs> yeah it's, it's almost impossible so a lot of our arguments will be about me trying to prove him wrong and then an another argument will come from me trying to prove him wrong then another argument then another argument then another argument then another argument all from this one argument that wasn't even big deal in the first place it could be something so simple it was just that we would never really see eye to eye so it says they miss nonverbal emotional cues. So for example, me looking upset, might not always understand that, may not recognize the consequences of their own actions, um, struggles with an impulse or to control and emotional regu emotionally regulate, um, may not learn from experience. So you may think, okay, you've spoken about something and then they repeat the same thing. Okay. Um, the lack 
the ab lack the ability to assess complex personal situations, don't understand how their actions can affect others. So these are all things that I went through. I may link this. It says, so when it talks about the Cassandra phenomenon, the Cassandra is from a Greek mythology, as you know. Okay, so my name is from Greek mythology. And it says, the Cassandra phenomenon refers to the non asperger person in the relationship, experience of not being believed when they talk to a friend about the problems. Okay, so another thing that is very difficult and also very triggering, I would say, is because when I would... And that's why after a while I just stopped speaking about it and stopped speaking to people, which meant I internalized it, is because people don't understand and don't believe you because they see the person and they see how the person acts. So even when I've said things on here or when I've talked, spoken about it, people are like, you are, um, people come to me like, what did I do? What did you do to break up with someone so amazing? What is it that you did? What is it that you said? And not to say that I had no part to blame, because I did, okay? I've already, I've already did that in my last video. That's why I wanted to do the last video first, because I didn't want to point blame, okay? It's not blame. It's we both were very, like I said, young. We both had our own traumas outside of him being on the spectrum and me being ADHD. And all of these things also were parts of why we broke up, not just because he was on the spectrum, but that was also added and added pressure, okay? So, um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I would speak to people or I would, and, and I would try, I wouldn't want to, like, come across, again, I wouldn't want to come across like I'm just, like, speaking down on him. And it got to the point where people would just be like, it's like, it was just almost like, again, like I'm lying. Do you get what I mean? That's how it would feel. And um, so you may, and then being on, being ADHD, we have this thing of, like, feeling rejected so when I would re tell people or when I would say things or that's even why the breakup in the beginning was so hard because when you would speak when I would speak it would almost be like oh just get back with him like anyway so you may reach out to support to heal your relationship with the autistic person in your life if no one believes you when you say there's a problem this could demonstrate the Cassandra phenomenon Not only does, can this keep you from help you deserve but it can also intensify your feelings of invisibility and low self-worth so i really struggled with like my self-esteem and i struggled before so that's what i'm trying to say these are not i struggled before the relationship so when i came into the relationship with what i already struggled with it confirmed what i was the lies i was telling myself okay so here it talks about all the ways that you can um express yourself and self-care and um like what you can do to 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 help yourself in in that sort of relationship yeah and sorry my arm's just itching and what i will say is and that's the last bit that i want to get into before we end the video is i will say that um now looking back the things i needed to do was really focus on me um i think like i said why it was harder is because i had adhd and i didn't understand my adhd symptoms enough and obviously at the time of me and my ex breaking up i had a one-year-old so i had all of that going on okay like having a child and feeling alone and feeling stressed and not having my mom and i had support let me not say i didn't have support but the feeling of like now losing myself and not being able to do what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. And it was all a lot, okay? And I think now looking back, I will definitely say self-care, um, taking time out to just work on me. They say when you're with someone that is on the spectrum, you need to be very content in yourself. So I feel like, not that you can't be with someone on the spectrum, it's that even going into that relationship or if you're in that relationship, you have to really, really, really get self-love and self-care down packed, okay? You gotta be that person that knows how to spend time with yourself, knows what things you love to do by yourself, that enjoys spending time with friends. That's another great thing about being with someone on the spectrum. They aren't, they're gonna let you be you, okay? Because they maybe have struggled with being them, they're not people that are gonna come now and try to stop you from being you, okay? You can go out, you can have fun, you can go out with your friends, they're not really jealous people or any of these things. So those are the, another plus being in a relationship. They are going to ch ch like challenge you to be the best version of yourself and also know yourself. So I feel like coming on to the end of the relationship, I started to really spend time with myself. It's just that I feel like because 
my ex didn't get a full diagnosis at that time and completely understand, not anyone completely understands himself, but understand how to deal with what he um, was going through. It was, it was more about the fact that he wasn't willing to, I think, compromise. And not that he wasn't willing to compromise because he will kill me for saying that. His compromise wasn't good enough. He felt like he compromised completely, but it still wasn't good enough for me. That's how I'll say it, okay? So I think, yeah, like I'm saying, you really, like if I'm talking to someone that is going through it, that is struggling, that is in this sort of relationship, um, go and get a counselor, please go and get therapy. If you can't afford it, again, there is so many videos. Um, there's a video, there's videos that I've watched called from, there's videos that I've watched from someone called Autism From Inside, I'll link below. He's amazing. And there's other people um, that had do videos as well and I'll link below. But those are the, those, there's so many videos now and there wasn't that many videos, I can't lie, that I understand, and I didn't understand what, it, what was going on at the time. Cause like I said, he was undiagnosed for a long time. He got diagnosed when he was 26, I believe. And I think we broke up maybe when he was like 31. 31, yeah. Or 30. So he might have got diagnosed with 25 and we broke up at 30. I can't remember the exact dates. But yeah, so it took a long time for me to like even know that this is what it was. Do you get what I'm saying? So imagine just battling with yourself, thinking someone doesn't love you or do they love you? And then you know they love you, but why are they treat you this way? And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Battling. Another thing that I forgot to mention is your sex life. Um, that can be really affected because of autism, ADHD, all of the above. Um, yeah, but there is so much, so much on the internet now that you can look up and look at. So yeah, go and have a look. And I hope this video has helped. I hope you understand maybe my journey a bit more. Guys, the battery died, so I didn't get to finish my outro. But yeah, I just wanted to come on and just finish it and just say again, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the love. Please share, please like, do all of that stuff. And I will see you again next time. Mwah.